It's Colin Dolan here from Publift. We've got Matt from Word Solver joining us today in Northern England. He and I share a love of Manchester United, so uh, we were there pretty pretty well on that, even though Premier League hasn't started off too well. Thank Matt, thanks very much for taking the time. Can you uh, tell me a bit uh, about your business and why you started Word Solver? It's an interesting story. You started it right here in Australia. Yeah, uh, great to meet you. My background is in games programming, um, so I worked for Gremlin Interactive and Infograms um, going back a long time. Uh, they did some games like uh, Monty Mole and um, Infograms did um, Micro Machines and things like that. So uh, I've been working as a programmer for a long time and then it was made. Um, they closed down the studios in 2005 or so and then my wife and I thought, well, let's just get a plane ticket and travel around the world and we'll see friends as we go around. So we, we did that. And um, about six months into it, I was in Australia and bouncing between Australia and New Zealand. And um, I was just doing the puzzle on the back of a newspaper and they had some anagram puzzles. And I thought, you know, I could solve this by hand, but actually I'd rather just write a program to solve it. So I wrote, I wrote a program and it, it didn't take long to write and uh, downloaded a, a, a word list from, from online and, and, uh, and got it. And, and it was quite simple to write and, and it worked. And then I thought, well, Perhaps I could put that on the internet. You know, someone, somebody might find it useful. It might be quite interesting. And uh, so I put it on the internet. That took a while to to do that. And then a friend mentioned, "Well, why don't you put adverts on it as well?" So I thought, "Well, I'll, okay, I'll put some Google adverts on it." And at that point, the the solution really was just to put just to throw Google Ads AdSense onto it. And then uh, it started to grow. It was very slow at first. Um, and but after about a year, it started to make more money than the servers cost. But by 2010, it was starting to make enough money to support me. So I, at the time, I was on the automation track back here in the UK, but not particularly enjoying it. So I thought, right, let's go full time with the business. And then in 2011, I rebranded it as Wordsolver, uh, registered the IP, and got all the trademarks sorted. Um, and then every three years since then, I've, I've made a rewrite of the of the site to keep it up with the, all the latest front end tech. So that's kind of the story of, of how we get to. To hear. Very good, very good. I'm sure it was a difficult decision as we've all had to make to give up the day job and, and go at it full throttle. So that's uh, well done and it's uh, 10 years. So that's, um, that's great. I think there's some stat that 85% of uh, startups fail in their first four years. So um, well done on that. Yeah. Um, and speaking about that, you said from previous conversations that COVID was a very worrying time. Um, I know mm -hmm. if we definitely battened down the hatches a bit and were very conservative in, in our spending. So can you tell me just where you're at at this stage and just immediately be, before working with public? Because I think you, you said as a lot of publishers add since revenue has, has been decreasing over the last couple of years. Yeah, so during, during that time, I've, I've been working at home. Um, UK schools have been in lockdown between March and September, so I've, I've had three kids at home. Um, and obviously, yeah, as you say, the industry has been hit tough. Um, it's been hit quite hard. Um, but I've had no worries because I, I think I switched to, to public just before COVID. And uh, as I was saying before, the uh, 10 years ago, you could just throw AdSense on a site and you'd be fine. Um, but the industry has obviously changed dramatically. And I found that the income from AdSense kind of really declined over the last few years and I had some issues with confirmatory click issues and on mobile and um, I just you know um, was really struggling for income and of course AdSense doesn't do head of bidding or ad refresh and Google isn't 100% of the market so you're missing so much bid pressure from elsewhere. But I think it was back in January I got an email from from Ben uh, and I was thinking about how to integrate all these different technologies into the site you know head of bidding, ad refresh, content management, all that kind of stuff. But um, my passion really is programming fun things. It's, it's really in the content. It's not in the monetization or the privacy. Um, and I wasn't particularly looking forward to writing and testing all these different things that could increase the, the income for, for the company or to signing up with new ad partners for, uh, for pre-bid and for header, header bidding and all that kind of stuff. And I don't like anything that kind of takes away, away time from programming, really. So at the same time, like many publishers, I get loads of emails from um, companies saying, you know, we want to put our ads on your site. Um, and I've done that before, and sometimes it hasn't gone very well. Um, so I usually just ignore them. But then um, I got an email from Ben, one of, your, one of your sales guys, who outlined all the things I wanted to do um, to my site. And, said he, and he said, I'd do this. 
that these are things we can do at Publift. And I was like, well, okay, so you've got my attention then. So the, I, I decided just to kind of give it a go because things were looking so bad with AdSense. And this is back in January, so this is before COVID. And um, so then we did, the, we did the process of changing over to, Ad, to from AdSense to Publift. It was really easy. Um, and it may, means that I've managed to kind of continue to focus on develop, developing pro, products and uh, projects and programming rather than, you know, things I'm good at I'm good and uh, specialize at rather than um, all the all the other things to do with header bidding and uh, all the different things that I really do want to do. So, of course, we didn't realize that COVID was just around the corner at that point. Uh, and if the revenue had hit the industry when I was with AdSense, I don't think I'd still be in business. I, I think that would be it. I'd be looking for a job at the point where there was no jobs and everybody was furloughed in England. So switching to Publift was was really positive for me and has meant that I've been able to continue as a business and continue working. So it's been obviously been a real godsend. It's good to hear that. I think it's it's heartening. I think that's what I do with, with finance. You know, we, we outsource finance and those kind of areas we're just not that good at it. So um, I think it makes total sense. And I think we discussed as well about the, your struggles with maybe you know, finding out about compliance, GDPR compliance, and I know your a lot of your traffic is from the US as well with the, the Californian law uh, recently in, in place as well. What do you like about working with Publift in, in, in those capacities? The consent management platform has been really helpful. Um, so WordSolve is a really great site from a privacy compliance perspective because there's no storing of user data. There's no logging in, there's no addresses being held, and certainly no financial details. So um, the only GDPR and CCPA compliance I need to think about is the advertising side, really, and maybe analytics. So I could really use the, um, the content management platform that you guys provide right out of the box uh, without doing so, you know, too much work on it. Um, and that's, again, that's saved a huge amount of time. But also, it's a solution that's battle-tested. It's deployed globally on a huge number of sites. Um, so yeah, it means that I don't, really don't have to think about bug fixes or anything like that. It's all working. And it just, again, it's a time saver that means I can get back to programming. So it's really been positive. Yeah, that's interesting. And so one of the things we get from prospects a lot is kind of struggle to, to trust Publif. Just mm -hmm. I think Google has such a, a massive worldwide authority. And when you go from a program like Google AdSense to a business like Publif, publishers often ask, well, why should I trust Publif? And yeah, it'd be interesting to get, um, like, you seem to have got a kind of feeling of, of, of safety and reassurance from Publif. Mm -hmm. Is there anything during your 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 six months working with Publif that has given you that? Yeah, I mean, even before I signed up, actually, I looked at um, the recommended list of, of Google companies, you know, the recommended partners from Google, and, and you guys were listed on there. That was, I think that was one of the things that really helped, actually, just knowing that you were a recommended partner. Uh, put my mind at ease, but I'd say that in the first six months has been quite a lot of things actually. Um, so one thing is is the responses to emails. Um, you know, with the big behemoth companies that you have that have fifty million clients, they obviously can't give you personalized responses, um, or if they do, they take days. And then when I was raising issues with one of the companies I was working with, um, or, well, with Google, um, they they would give me a list of well, here's a li a vague list of things you can try, and they don't really know your site. Uh, but with Publish, of course, I've got an account manager in Nick, and he responds to queries um, as soon as he's online, and his responses are specific, and he's trying to find solutions. He cares that he wants to find solutions, and he knows the site well, and he's looking to find a good solution that works for everybody, uh, and that really helps my level of calm um, <laughs> when it comes to you know handing over your advertising. It's something very, obviously very important. I quite enjoy your updates. They're very good. Um, I, I do like the idea that you've got... Um, I do like your vision that you have. You know, you're looking for the obstacles that are facing the industry both now, but over the next hill as well, and how to navigate it. You recall when we had the first EU cookie law, and then came along GDPR, as we've said. And at that point, I'm thinking, well, what now? You know, what what's the next thing I have to deal with uh, from legislate that legislators are going to put out there? Of course, now it's CCPA, and there's only ever going to be more. It's not going to go away. So the the thought that you guys are thinking about that, so I don't have to. You know, that that's really positive, and obviously. You know, I know that's uh, that's, that's very reassuring uh, to that I won't get it wrong because uh, you guys are dealing with it. You know, a lot of the businesses we support are small one and two person businesses, which, you know, you have a direct impact on revenue and, and things like giving up your, your day job to focus on this is something that I try to have in our team as well to say, like, you're actually influencing 
these people's businesses. If not, you're working with a, a, a big corporation and they have loads of money. It doesn't matter if they lose ads for one yeah. day or something like that or something makes a mistake, but it's actually you're affecting real business here and real yeah. people's lives. So I think that's even another point as well is that the, the security kind of issue, we often get blocks from publishers to say, oh, what are you going to do with our data? But it's something that we really put a lot of emphasis in, in training our team to say, look, this data that you can access to is, is very important for the publisher and we can't do anything to jeopardize that. But um, yeah, no, that's, that's good feedback. So I think um, I, I always kind of finish these kind of things and been doing recently is uh, we talked about being in your, your kind of bliss moment. I think we talked about this previously before, maybe it's golf, maybe it's solving problems, but what is a, a time in your life, personal or professional where time just flies and you just absolutely love it i think it's i have a few depending on who i'm with so with my kids we just love playing game, games together um so usually like four i've got four computers here and i've got three kids so the four of us we just play four player minecraft uh, or <laughs> and Actorio as well so that's just brilliant um and then with my wife you know we the kind of the bliss moments are when we're trying out a new restaurant uh, and that's just really great. But obviously, in terms of when I'm just out with with the guys, it, it tends to be golf. As a you know, we went up to Gullen, up to Scotland last year, uh, last week, and that was just super. You know, we had the weather; uh, it was brilliant. Um, but in terms of my own, it, it's programming. It, that really is. It's, it connects me with real kind of. It's it's a, such a creative pro process, um, programming, um, and I feel like I'm taking a dream and making it reality. So it's, it feels quite divine, kind of bringing that kind of. Um, creation in there and and uh, for me that's that's uh writing my own stuff rather than like writing what a boss tells me to write that's that's bliss it's great it's, it's pretty cool i should have paid attention back in uh my uh, programming lectures in, in <laughs> <laughs> all right matt that, that, is, that is fantastic thanks very much for uh joining me and uh, and sharing those experiences it's uh, it's, it's it's nice to chat always <laughs> great chat yeah <laughs>